been seven and a half months since we installed those coilovers. And a lot of you guys are asking about them. A lot of comments on a lot of videos, you guys are saying, hey, what's up with the Mazda? We don't mod it a lot. It's just the daily. It's just Courtney's daily, really. And then I just rob it all the time. But we did put the $400 Raceline coils on seven and a half months ago at this point. And a lot of you guys are curious. So today I want to show you guys, you know, kind of how we feel after that amount of time, how they've held up, how everything is going. The coilovers that are on this car right now are the Altimos. They're like the middle range ones. There's the red ones, the green ones, and the blue ones. That's how I remember it. There's red ones. They're like the base model, the Altimos are the green ones, they're the middle ones, and then you can get the more expensive ones which have the dampening adjustments and stuff, which we didn't get on this, because this is, it, it doesn't really need it, it's more just for, you know, like dailying around and just looking a little bit low, so Courtney gets stoked, it's not actually like, to be used for any kind of performance or anything like that. Honestly, I'm honestly, I'm pretty happy with them, and something I wanna say before this video gets really too started is that this is not a sponsored video, this is not a paid video, this is not sponsored at all. So I guess for starters, if you guys haven't seen the video where we put these guys on, go ahead, Watch that video so you guys can learn kind of like how we felt and what we noticed when we first got them. And then once you have watched that video and you are fully caught up, I'm gonna start by just like, I wanna show you guys these coilovers. Dude, actually, fuck living in Canada. It's so bad. So bad on your cars. This is a Quebec car, meaning Quebec is notoriously cold. It snows a lot of the year. They salt the roads like crazy people. Like there is way too much salt there and it destroys cars. So when we bought this thing, it was already kind of rusty. BC is actually like one of the best places to have cars because they don't really salt the roads because it doesn't really snow. Coilovers were put on in BC. None of the rust you see anywhere else has anything to do with the time frame of these coilovers. Anyways, you guys can probably tell right away just by looking here why I wanted to show you guys these. Like, these have been on for, like I said, seven months and they were, some of them were winter months, but in BC it was only about maximum four weeks of snow in that entire time. So, none of this is really to do with like salt and stuff on the roads. But, I mean like this is not in horrible shape, but if you look at the threads, there's already a little bit of rust bubbles starting. This is where I notice it the most. On the actual springs, you'll see like the green paint has kind of worn off, especially up here where they rub on each other. And then there's like a lot of little rust speckles and stuff. And especially like up here, like there's a little bit more rust than I would expect for seven months. Like they're not that old. The ones on my BRZ don't even look like that. And I've had them on there for three years, including winters, like in Ontario winters. So like not as aggressive as Quebec, but pretty aggressive winters. I, I normally wouldn't show a coilover in a review, but I think that's something worth noting. Once again. Dude, I'm so excited to film this video. You guys have no idea how much, like, this is how my whole channel started, was just by, like, on my way to work, filming with my GoPro and my mic just, like, taped to my dash. Makes me remember, like, why I started doing this. Cause, like, just this happiness of doing this is the entire reason I started filming. Anyways, first off, like I said, I really do like these coilovers. I think they're, for what you, basically, you get what you pay for. And 100%, I think that what we paid for these coilovers makes them worth every bit of how they are, how they act, everything. First thing right off the hop, now I know I have a very aggressive, ag aggressive driveway. It's pretty extreme. I actually ordered some uh, ramps to go at the end because it is not very low car friendly, but it does cause the car to flex a lot. So something you'll notice when the car flexes a lot or even just a little bit in and out of every parking lot is it's actually quite loud. Um, it makes quite a lot of noise when your suspension moves, which is something that your suspension does all the time. When you're just driving down the road, it's not horrible, but when you're like flexing over speed bumps or in and out of parking lots or anything, it's kind of loud. We'll see right here if you guys can hear it just when I come out of my driveway. Yep. That wasn't bad. That was a two out of four, not bad. Now the Mazda, I don't think I took my allergy pill this morning. I did say in a couple videos after we put these in that they're really noisy, and a lot of you guys said that you don't have that issue. You guys said you have the same ones, no issue. So it may just be I have a bad set, I don't really know. But a lot of you guys said that you didn't have that issue. So just something to note, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen to all of them, but it happened to me. Aside from that, like normally driving up and down the streets like this, like it's pretty quiet. You will notice when you hit speed bumps though, everything is tight. Everything is tight and it sounds like when you have a blown strut, the, well, this is the best way I can describe it. When your strut blows, you have that like knocking noise, like you're kind of hitting an empty paint can, just like when you hit a bump, and it does that. I don't know why it does that. Everything's tight, obviously nothing's blown. It was brand new strut, brand new coil. I don't know what it is. Me and Emerson can't figure it out. It's a mystery to this day. 
but you will notice whenever there's like a big cut or a groove in the road and you go over it, you'll hear that sound. That doesn't really affect anything, to be honest. Like as soon as you have the music up, you don't hear it. Like most most regular people drive around with music on and as soon as, it's like, it's like a, a interior trim piece being loose. As soon as you turn on music, you don't notice it's loose. Like it, it's one of those stupid little things, but. So these are non-adjustable coilovers, meaning there's no dampening, there's only height. You can't choose your dampening. So on my BRZ, the spring rate is kind of stiff, but I have the dampening kind of soft. And obviously you forfeit that when you buy the middle ones instead of buying the more expensive ones. If you're looking to dial in your ride quality, definitely get the more expensive ones because these you kind of get what you get and you're stuck with it. There's not much you can do about it. For what they are, they're pretty good. Like you'll, you'll probably notice it's pretty smooth when you hit bigger bumps. It is a little bit bouncy. I think bouncy is the best word. It's not sharp. The Civic is sharp, but the Civic has like legit race coils on it. Kind of bounces, kind of like if you have coil sleeves. Coil sleeves bounced a lot, um, way worse than this. I don't really know what else to compare it to. Maybe like a, the bed of a truck, like you know when you hit a bump and the back of your truck kind of goes up and down a little bit. But a little bit of bouncing has never killed anybody. Lowering your car, that's kind of what you'd expect. Your, your ride's gonna get a little bit rougher. It, you signed up for that when you lowered your car. But aside from it being bouncy on bigger bumps, you get what you expect when you're just cruising. Like right now, we're, we're happy, we're cruising. There's not much going on. Like on a regular road, you really wouldn't notice. And also like, yeah, Courtney drives this thing, you know, on a daily basis to work. But like when I have fun in it, I have fun in it. I will say that it does add a lot of really good grippy handling feelings. And it's like you're in a Mazda 3, so you really don't expect it to be crazy. You expect it to be whatever a Mazda 3 would be like. But it does do a pretty good job planting the car and making it feel a lot nicer on the road. These things aren't known to have killer body roll, but they do have body roll. They're just massive threes, right? But if you go like this, like you'll notice, it doesn't really body roll too much. It, it dives pretty well. It's a little bit sloppy that it's not on the nicest tire. It's all just stuff that makes Courtney happy. She doesn't want to spend a lot of money on car parts because she doesn't, it's not where she wants to put her money, which is smart. She just lets me waste all my money on car parts. On a Mazda 3 specifically, like this Mazda 3, and most Mazda 3s, they're, they have a longer wheelbase. Um, basically meaning the gap between the wheels is longer. They're not really meant to be track cars or performance cars or anything like that, right? They're just, they're like A to B, your average car. This thing scrapes a lot. This car is higher than the BRZ and it's higher than the Civic, but it cannot go half the places that the BRZ and the Civic can go, strictly because the wheelbase, the wheels are so far apart that when you go over something, front end starts sinking away while the rear end is still caught up behind it. And it's only a matter of inches, right? Like it's, it's inches of difference between this and like the BRZ, for example, but it, it makes a big difference. If you're gonna lower a Mazda 3 second generation, it definitely will scrape a lot more than you're probably expecting it to. I guess what I'm trying to get at with this whole thing is that these are amazing first coilovers. These are amazing coilovers if you're just getting, I recommended these to my brother, okay? Because he wants to lower his car and I was like, if you're just getting into cars and it's your first car and you're gonna lower it, or you know, you wanna lower your girlfriend's car, they will be great. I wouldn't put these on the BRZ and I wouldn't put these on the Civic just because of the abuse I give the cars. I mean, I don't do it all the time, but like I have taken the BRZ to track days and I plan on doing some stuff with the Civic. That's why we're, we're doing some of the things we're doing to it. But for just the aesthetics or for just like a first time coilover or, you know, trying to get something on the cheaper end, which is what these are, they do a fantastic job. Like I, I, I know I nitpicked, but that's the point. I need to tell you, I don't want to lie to you guys. I want to tell you guys all the things that I have found wrong with them. But if you're just looking for a straight up way to just dump your car, you can get this thing pretty low on these coils and they do a good job. Like aside from, like I said, aside from nitpickiness, like I'm driving around right now, zero issues. You can hear that, that hollowness in the trunk though. This is something we know what we're doing. We've installed a lot of coil over. For what you're looking at, I would put these things at, and knowing that you're buying the ones without dampening and all that kind of stuff, I'd put these coilovers at a solid seven out of 10. Like they do a really good job. Sure, they're a little bit rusty and they make a little bit of noise, but like if I just hook this car right now and I just go like this, like that was planted. That was, that was a pretty good hook. <laughs> they could use better tires, but it was a pretty good hook. Feels nice, it rides pretty smooth. I would give it a seven out of 10. If you're, if you're saying that they're not a seven out of 10, it's because you're looking at things that are not in the price range of these coils. And that's, I think that's the key for these is that you're trying to get something in your price range. You have to accept the flaws that come with it. Damn, and that's it. That's a wrap for this video, dude. That felt good. I'm sorry today's video was kind of short and a little bit different than, you know, it was a throwback video kind of, but I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing this. 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this video too. I know a lot of you guys were asking for this, that's the main reason why we made this video. I didn't have a lot of time today, but I figured while I'm out and about, I'll make this video just for everybody that's always curious about these coils. So that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you are not already subscribed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace out, and stay committed.